My next guest only needed 30 seconds to get the job done at LFA 100 back on February 19th. It is Stephen Nguyen joining me here on the program. Stephen, how's it going, man? How are you doing, man? I'm feeling good. I bet. Uh, what a highlight reel finish that was. Uh, where does that win rank in terms of career uh, highlights, just with the fact it was on LFA 100 and you got a pretty uh, nice highlight reel finish? Man, you know, um, especially being on LFA 100, you know, making my debut with my whole comeback, you know, going through all the stuff within the last year, man, you know, it it was definitely the, one of the best feelings I've ever had. Yeah, right. how much pressure what was going in there coming off the first career loss? Of course, we saw you in Contender Series before that. What, what was it? What, what was the mentality heading in uh, into that fight? You know, I was actually very relaxed. I mean, I know I know there was pressure on me, um, but I tried not to pay too much attention in there, man. When I'm when I'm actually in there fighting, I don't feel any pressure at all. Um, but obviously, there's a lot of writing on this fight. Like I said, I lost my Contender Series fight, and I was supposed to fight back in November. Um, but I had a shoulder injury that kept me out. So, man, a lot of things have been happening, man, and I, I feel like this is the perfect timing for me to come right back. So, No, I agree. Uh, were you expecting to finish the fight that quickly? I know the, the point is to not get paid by the hour when you're in the cage, but uh, did, you, did you anticipate a quick finish like that? You know, I, I anticipate for everything, man. Uh, quick finish for sure, always. I mean, you want to get the job done and get out. So, obviously, I had that in my uh, plans as well. I know I had a longer reach. I know I can just, if I just pinpoint right down the, right down the pipe i know i could could have got him so but i was ready for a three-round war as well man you know so yeah i'm glad well, it worked out the way it did no certainly uh, how was it you know leading into the fight without you know the crowd the pandemic obviously different for you uh you know fighting in that environment uh yeah i mean it was de- definitely different um they were they blocked like every other single row but uh hey man i'm just happy that my friends and family got to come that's the most important thing so they got to be there that's all that matters how did you celebrate after the win Man, I'm I'm a big foodie, man. So <laughs> I bet uh, <laughs> these last couple of days, I just been eating all the stuff that I want to eat on my on my on my list that I made. <laughs> no. So yeah, man. And and you know you sort of talked about it there. Obviously, you had the shoulder injury. What what else kept you out of the cage for so long? Because you had a bit of a layoff, like like I said there, uh, heading into this fight. Right. And I mean, even COVID, just in general. You know, oh, of course. Time. Yeah. In regional MMA, there's a lot of uncertainty yeah. when that all happened, right? So so take me through sort of the last, I mean, we talked about the win there, but take me through sort of leading into this fight, what you've been dealing with. Man, so uh, well, I just recently moved to um, Dallas last March. So it's about almost a year now coming up. Um, as soon as we moved here, the pandemic happened. COVID-19 hit. Um, everything shut down, as you know. So we had to go back to my hometown in Kansas, and we had to stay there for a couple months. That kind of held us back a little bit. You know, everybody's trying to find work, things like that. And uh, we finally got to Dallas. Everything's looking good. It's getting ready for a big fight. About three weeks out from my fight, injured my shoulder. You know what I'm saying? So then that that's another six to eight week recovery at least. You know, so then right after that, we're, we're looking for another opponent, you know, another fight for LFA. They gave me another opportunity for February 19th. But not a lot of people know I actually kind of took this fight on somewhat of a short notice as well. I found out he was going to be my opponent pretty much on the week of my fight. Wow. So, okay. You know, we, we had no choice. I wanted to fight. There was no way I was going to say, hey, you know, I'm going to wait again. Cause I've been waiting too long. So there you go. You know, um, we just had to take it and just embrace the challenge. And, and how, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Like, how did you deal with, with all of that? Because, it, you know, unlike other sports, you know, when you lose a fight, it, it's not like you're going to get back in there the next day or the next week or whatever in, in other, you know, professional sports. Like, you have to wait a while. And in your case, you had to wait even longer because of the injury and everything like that. Like, how, how reliant were you on your support system during that time? Because I'm sure it was very difficult for you. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's more of a mental thing. You know, my body was ready. I was in fight shape. Uh, you know, just training for somebody, a certain style for eight plus weeks and then having to switch it up. Um, I'm a smart fighter, you know. I like to think everything through my training camp. I'm, I, I think about a lot of different aspects of, on what I can do in different situations, scenarios. So, you know, I, I did think a lot about that, but at the end of the day, I just had to follow my gut feeling, and I just knew that it didn't matter who they put in front of me. Like, I had to believe in myself, and I went out there and I just, I did, I did just that. Um, we're in the Fortis MMA shirt, one of the best gyms in the world, Fortis. Uh, Coach Safe, how much did you sort of lean on him over this last little bit? Because I know it's not just inside, you know, the, the gym when you're training. He's got sort of that, you know, kind of structure outside the cage as well, keeping tabs and all that on all of his fighters. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I talked to him on fight week. I talked to him on fight day. Um, he keeps me accountable for everything. And that, that goes with everybody at the gym. It's not just me. Everybody that's part of that team – you know, we know that he's the general and he, he runs it the right way. You know, he takes care of us. So, 
We just know one one thing is the only thing that's the most important, man. Getting that win. That's it. And and you know the result, like we talked about, just an amazing finish. Like I said, you don't get paid by the hour. I saw everyone sort of you know talking about that on social media that finish. But um, do you feel like it's kind of an, a culmination of you know all the work you've put in? And when you're in a gym like Fortis, you're training with UFC level fighters. Like, did it kind of give you that kind of you know reminder that you are at that level? Uh, every day, man. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll go in there and I'm training with the best in the world, man. You know, so you you learn a lot about yourself by the time you come out of that that gym. Um, but training is great there, man. Um, we have the best fighters there, and jiu-jitsu guys. We have almost all the styles you can think of at Fortis MMA. So we, we stay prepared, and we're ready for everything. When are you looking to get back in there? I know we're a couple days removed uh, for, from the fight or whatever, or more than that. Almost we're coming up to almost a week. But uh, have you thought about when you want to get in there next? Man, well, um, you know, I'm in talks right now with my manager and my coach about some some things coming up. I can't really t- – say too many details no worries you're in a good spot though right i mean seven to one record uh, yeah. you know so let's say this um uh, i'm gonna stay ready man i don't have a scratch on me um you know i'm gonna continue to train it's not like i'm injured so i'm just gonna get right back into the gym i'm, I'm taking this the rest of this week off and then it's right back to work amazing that, that's great um now correct me if i'm wrong do you have like a job outside of fighting or is fighting sort of your your primary income i don't know if you have sponsors like to sort of keep it going full time or what, what do you do like for for that's you know paying fair. the bills I definitely have my sponsors that definitely help me out. So, you know, shout out to all my sponsors. Um, and uh, I'm a personal trainer as well. I actually do personal training at Fortis MMA. Oh, so, cool. Okay. So I train there and I train people there. So, hey, anybody who wants to get a training session, then let me know. There you go. It's, it's, it's a good plug. Yeah, and, and at least you're in that sort of field, right? Because I know for some fighters, like, they don't they don't get to work, you know, with in something like, you know, health and fitness related. It's maybe they're, you know, in an office or something. So does it make it a bit easier because it is at Fortis and you're already there anyways having to train? Hey, man, you know, um, my coach hooks it up, you know, so I get a really good deal and, you know, I just get to do what I love every single day. Either if it's teaching people or training myself, I get to continue to go through it every single day, you know, and reteach myself. things. So I'm doing what I love right now. My life is good. Good for you, man. Is as you found, I, I don't know how things are in Texas, but in terms of actually doing training, are you still actually able to do training, but like with the masks on or how does it work? Cause I know everywhere is a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. Right now, yeah, we, we have, you have to wear a mask while training and stuff like that. I mean, you know, as training MMA, just with my teammates, that's different, but yeah, with the clients and stuff like that, we all wear masks. How many times do your clients say, what did you say? Cause you were in the mask. Like, did you ever have that? Cause I know it's, it's, even if I'm going to get groceries or something, I can't hear everyone. It's tough, right? So. It's, it's hard, but you know, Good thing in a client personal trainer relationship, you're just it's just y'all, you guys, you know. So it's not it, it, it's it works out, and it's a rewarding job, right? You're literally helping people get better with their health and and all that. And I I'm sure too. I mean, being at Fortis, there's probably a bit more prestige with the fact that like you're a fighter, right? Like so there's there's some prestige to that, I'm sure. When when people are looking to you know get in sure. shape, yeah. I mean, they 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 have a role model to look up to while they're working out, and you know they get they get that in in person experience with the fighter, so. It's definitely a unique experience, and people love love training. Fortis is a big gym. There's a lot of characters in that gym, uh, just from some of the fighters I've had a chance to interview with. Who would you say you're sort of closest with at the gym or maybe someone you train a little bit more than others? Well, you know, I'd say Miles Johns because he's from my hometown, you know. Like, he's, oh, cool. the, one, who, he's the one who actually introduced me to, to the team. Um, so, yeah, we're both from the same city, and, uh, you know, I've always been close with him. So yeah, and it's cool, too, because his brother's right along the way as well, kind of like you are, like kind of on that cusp of getting a UFC shot, too. So it must be cool that you guys are call, all kind of coming up together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have a beast in that room, 145-pound monsters, you know, 135-pound monsters, 55. Everybody, there's in every single weight class in right now in the UFC, we have monsters at our gym in every weight class. Uh, what's the plan for the rest of the week? Uh, you know, like you said, eating some good food. I would listen if I lived in Texas, I'd be eating all the food too. You guys have amazing food over there. Um, what what what's what's sort of the plan the rest of the week? Uh, man, you know, just to recover my body. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's it's weird because the day after I woke up, I actually kind of felt a little bit sore. I wasn't sure could have been the adrenaline or something, but just uh just relaxing, man, just relaxing, enjoying the wind, eating the good food, hanging out with my girlfriend. Um, hanging out with friends and then uh, as soon as Monday's back next week it's going to be just right back to work man yeah business as usual um, are you watching any Netflix right now any any TV shows that you're getting into right now anything like that not not yet man um, but I am a huge gamer so. oh there we go okay we got lots to talk about then that, that's good so okay Xbox PlayStation what, what, are you, what are you playing these days uh, I play Warzone on uh, PS4 nice so, yeah so 
I've been playing that a lot. Um, so guys, you guys want to get, you guys I, was, I, I was just, I was waiting for the, do you want to get this work, you know, type, uh, type quote at, from you there. So at, that's at good. Ninja, guys, at my ninja. Yeah. I heard, so Jeff Neal, I know has gotten really into gaming too. Do you, I, I don't think he plays uh Warzone, but I know he's, he sort of, he was telling me he was getting into the gaming stuff. Do you play with any of the other fighters at all? Yeah. I play with uh, a couple of guys from the gym. Uh, Jeff, uh, I haven't played with him yet. I know he plays Warzone a little bit, but I'm not He's sure a newbie, him. though. You don't want because you know what? It, it wouldn't be fair, right? Because it sounds like you're a hardcore gamer. <laughs> I mean, he would he would just be at a loss. You know, he I wouldn't mean, be able to do anything. Yeah, no, I'll play with I'll play with anybody. I mean, it's it's whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love Warzone. It's fun. That's good. Yeah. Uh, and any other games, or is that sort of the the main focus is Warzone? Uh, I mean, that's just you know something that I play when I'm when I'm when I get this. It's the best when I get home from training and uh, just a good way to decompress. You know. And a lot of fighters play Warzone too, so I think like eventually, you know, when you do make it to the UFC, you'll kind of be ready if anyone wants to challenge you outside the cage in a game of Warzone, right? So. <laughs> Start streaming, man. You never yeah, know. exactly. Is that something you've looked into doing the whole streaming thing and kind of you know going that route like a Sean O'Malley? Uh, nah, man. Nah, nah. Right now, there's only one one focus in mind, man. There's only one focus in mind. That's getting to the UFC. You know, like I, lo- I love Warzone. Don't get me wrong. That's a lo- that's all I play, but. Um, there's only one goal in mind, the UFC. And then once once we get there, man, I mean, you can have another talk about that. But. <laughs> there you go. No, no, for sure. Because it's kind of easy because, right, you just set up the camp. Like, you're already playing anyways. You might as well get some people to tune in, kind of build up the brand. But, yeah, I, I, I like your thinking, though, you know. Soul sure. focus, UFC, and then we'll then we'll go from there, right? So, sir. Sure. Good stuff, man. Uh, Steven, thanks so much for the time, man. Congratulations again on the win. Uh, excited to see what's next. In the meantime, I know you got some sponsors you want to plug. I know you got some social media you want to get out there. I'll give you the last word. Hey guys, follow me on Instagram at Stephen Win W I N one four five guys, and on uh, Twitter as well, Stephen underscore Win W I N as well, guys. And you know, shout out to my team, shout out to my manager Jason, shout out to everybody that's involved in helping me out. This is just the beginning.